I'm Rick, uh, and a few years ago, Daniel Brooks and I created a show called Hard Cell. It was a kind of twisted psychological tragedy starring my fictitious twin brother, Arnie. There he is, folks! 100 trillion cells pulsing with life and vitality! How you doing, darling? Shut up, Arnie. So with Arnie in charge, Hard Cell was a bit of a hard sell, ironically. Arnie is no longer in control, folks. I am. And here is what I have to say. Our minds, our bodies, our schools, our cities have all become commodities for sale. I would now like to thank the sponsor for this afternoon's performance of Hard Cell, BMO Financial Group. BMO is Factory Theatre season sponsor. My company, Weird Productions, does its banking with BMO. I do my banking with BMO. My wife does her banking with BMO. And thanks to a recent promotion aimed at the parents of young children, my kids now do their banking with BMO. <laughs> The fossil fuel financing for BMO was 30.3 billion. The CO2 from total financed emissions, 97 million tons. The CEO of ExxonMobil, we know he said stuff like this. At a minimum, there's an enormous amount of uncertainty around this whole question of global warming. Does that stop Rick from shopping for ExxonMobil? No, because when Rick looks for gas, you know what he looks for? He looks for this little SO sign. Why? Because he gets, he gets these aeroplane miles, right? You know what that gets him? One of these fancy little Air Canada Elite cards, which allows him a, you know, family lounge access and a priority boarding. And hey, he even gets to sit in one of these every now and then. Oh yeah and he always has time for Tim Hortons. That's why Rick shops at Esso. And how does Rick justify that, Rick? Well, I've been driving a Toyota Prius for eight years. Now, good for you, Rick, way to go. Look, okay, <laughs> all right, I'm trying. I know marketing makes the world go round. That's not the issue. You know what the issue is? Pardon me, Rick. Rick used to rail against Disney all the time for, you know, repeated human rights violations and for operating sweatshops in China and, and for aiming most of its advertising at children under the age of seven. When everybody knows that children under the age of seven aren't able to critically comprehend televised advertising messages, they're prone to accept them as accurate, as truthful, as unbiased. Did that prevent Rick Miller from signing a contract with Disney? No, they threw him a lot of zeros and he signed it. And quote, any and all media now known and hereafter devised in perpetuity and in all languages, in all versions and forms throughout the universe. There it is, folks, that's right. Now, does that make Rick Miller a hypocrite? Yes. <laughs> but he's just like all of us, right? He's just doing what it takes to pay the bucks, to make the bills, to feed the family. That's the way the world works, folks. No, that is not the way the world works. That was a choice I made several years ago. I basically sold myself to a show that I think is a piece of crap to a company that I don't really support. This is about what you actively do, how you choose to live your life. You can choose to be a cynical asshole like Arnie, who thinks it's all a joke, or you can choose to open your eyes, confront these truths, conform to your values, and, and play the game in a, in a Bono kind of way. Bono, jeez, oh, here he goes about Bono. He always goes on and Bono, Bono. And confront the truth that these corporate forces now control all the institutions that once made true democracy possible. Government, lawmakers, press, the education system, they have all more or less been bought. And we need to understand how these corporate forces work and work within them and work with them to prevent them from exploiting everything before it's too late. Because that's how corporations now work. That's how capitalism now works. Creative destruction is the essential fact about capitalism. Yeah, Rick loves those Germans. Uh, he always throws German. He's not German, he's Austrian. Fine, okay, all right, all right. It actually comes from Karl Marx. All right, Marx, you folks, personally on the, on the Marx spectrum, me, I'm a little bit more groucho than Karl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rick, wait a minute, don't you, don't you own a corporation? Yes, I own a corporation. This is not an anti-corporate, anti-capitalist show. I think there are tremendous people working in tremendous corporations all over the world doing tremendous things. But I think capitalism and corporations need boundaries. They need controls. Or we'll find the kind of stuff that's happening all over the streets today, all over the world. When quarterly shareholder earnings matter more than the interest of people, of you and me, of employees, of customers, of society at large, we have a big problem. Okay, Rick, whoa. I don't know if you're expecting applause here, but uh, you're getting a bit too emotional. You're starting to lose our audience. This is my audience. If I won't. Okay. Okay, Rick, you know what to do now. So just do it. I have no control over anything. Not anymore, Rick. My turn. Well, hello, Toronto! Ladies and gentlemen, on this side of the mirror, 
There's no thesis. There's only showbiz. For I'm a showman. I spent my entire life inside Rick's busy brain, going from fictitious show to fictitious show, messing around with his cherished beliefs. I did a show about the uh, owl on the stage once. You know what it was called? It was called The Hero with a Thousand Feces. I describe what I call the hero's journey. He hears a call to adventure, a call to follow your bliss. Forgive the flatulence, folks. I wasn't just farting around with Joseph Campbell, though, no. I was commenting on the potency of those three innocent-sounding words, follow your bliss. Because basically it sanctions selfishness on a colossal scale, right? Do whatever it takes to make you happy. I am a marketing consultant, but originally I was a child psychologist studying the effects of advertising on children. Nobody really minds that there are people like Dr. Claude in the world, eh? And distracting you by feeding your selfish animal desires with products. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the General Electric Miss Hard Cell Extravaganza! Thank you very much, thank you very much, Barbara. That was hot, I tell you. Speaking of hot, I think you know where losers go. They go in the hard cell microwave. I did a show about uh, survival and replication once that was called Ding dong, it's Dick Dawkins. Richard Dawkins goes door to door selling his book, The Selfish Gene. Selfishness is literally built into our DNA. The same principle applies to memes, jokes, jingles, slogans, uh, where's the beef, give it to Mikey, color my world, uh, follow your bliss, uh, hard sell is the best show ever. When you plant a fertile meme in my mind, you literally parasitize my brain. It gives you wings, it lifts and separates you. You and I were meant to fly! Oh, what a feeling! It keeps going and going and going! And there are many ways for us salesmen to parasitize your brains, my friends. Oh yeah, a little fancy little dance step. Ah, uh, yeah! A little purple puppet. Where are we anyway? Well, we're in the good city of uh, Toronto. I hate Toronto! Funny accents. You are a cynic. You're afraid you cannot have any impact on the world yourself. So you waste your time condemning the motives of other people, ridiculing everything. All right, folks, I'm cynical, okay? It's my cell. I did a show about cells once. It was called, Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. And hey, if you got a product to sell, you might want to hire Morgan Freeman to sell it. Why? Because my rich, highly trained baritone voice has been extensively market tested by the Q-score system to connotate credibility and respect. See, everybody loves Morgan Freeman, huh? Even Rick likes Morgan Freeman, eh, Rick? Probably gone home to his family, his little cell. Singing them one of those little bedtime songs he wrote on the guitar. I hope you keep your eyes wide open and keep your head up high. Remember who you are. And God bless Bono. Bono! <laughs> Freaking Bono! God. I did a show about Bono once. It was called Thongs for the Third World. There's nothing you can do. You're just a drop in the bucket. Come on, people don't want to know the truth. Coke, it's just not good for you. <laughs> we want to be lied to, we want to be manipulated, we want to be distracted. And you got a phone strapped to your hand. Technology's a god, and greed is good, and selfishness drives the whole damn thing. It's everywhere. So give up and give in, just relax. Put on a happy face. Count down the minutes, folks. That was from a show I did about Che Guevara called I'll Have a Non-Fat Grande Decap Che Latte, Please. <laughs> Rick talked about uh, empathy, kindness, compassion. How we haven't just survived as a species because we're selfish, no. We've survived because we have the ability to love. I think our society manufactures cynicism. And I think selling hope is better than selling cynicism. It's a choice, and our choices do have consequence because we are all connected as citizens, as consumers, and yes, as cells that sell. And the question then becomes, what are you selling? What are you selling? I'd like to open up the conversation to you in the lobby. Thank you very much for coming this Sunday afternoon. Have a great day.